It's been 160 days since the crash of Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752. And the families of the victims are continuing to demand justice. Today they announced they formed a group, they are forming a group, to ensure Iran is held to account. 55 Canadian citizens and 30 permanent residents of this country were among the 176 people killed when Iran shot the plane down shortly after takeoff. Prime Minister Trudeau said today that his government is committed to getting answers. We want to hear now from one of the family members still waiting for those answers as well as justice. Hamed Esmailian lost his wife, Parisa, and his nine-year-old daughter, Rira, in the crash. He joins us now from Richmond Hill, Ontario. Hi, Hamed. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much for making time. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, first of all, we, we spoke to you a, a little while ago, uh, just reading 160 days. I can't believe it's been 160 days. When you hear that number, uh, what are you thinking? And, and, and mostly, how, how are you doing? When I think about 160 days, I think, I think about 160 sleepless nights. I think about a dark tunnel that we all the family is going through. Uh, you know, we have had difficult time in the last 160 days. We had this uh, uh, happen to us, and after that, COVID-19 came in, and so we had to be in self-isolation, most of us. And uh, we had no voice in, uh, in the, most of the days of this uh, 160 days. And we, ha we don't know anything. That's the more important thing, I think, for us, because we have no idea what happened that night. So this nightmare is going on, I mean. Yeah, I, I definitely want to ask you about that because I, I remember the day of the crash. I remember the days after it. I remember the promises to get answers and the assurances from Iran that those answers would come. There would be an investigation. Certainly COVID happened in the middle of all this. So that changes things to a certain degree. But still, uh, you know, there were 60 days prior to the start of COVID where those answers weren't generated. And, and, and from your perspective, do you, what is your sense? Like, are, are those answers coming ever? Oh, I don't think so. If you think that the Iranian regime is gonna answer those questions, uh, I'm completely negative. And, you know, they had time, they had time to send the black boxes in on January, on February sometime. Even if there was some negotiations between our government here and Iranians on February, but nothing came out of, uh, out of that meeting too. So they they traveled several times to Ukraine, Iranian officials, like their foreign minister Zarif, their transportation uh, minister. They couldn't take the black box with themselves. You know, I don't know. Uh, I don't see any relation to coronavirus that day, at that time. And then the coronavirus came in and they promised on 11th of March to hand over the black boxes in IKO meeting here in Montreal. That never happened again. And now again, they're talking in the last two weeks that we are going to give the black boxes. We are going to send it to the French company, but the French company said they haven't received any any application from Iran. Yeah, and, and I should explain for our audience, those black boxes initially Iran, you know, there was a lot of discussion about who would analyze them, who's equipped to analyze them. As you say, there were promises to get them to a different country for that to happen. But as far as we know, those black black boxes have nothing. Nothing has happened with them, and and the federal government is often asked about it. Minister Garneau, uh, the former minister, Mr. Goodale, as well as the prime minister, they say they keep pushing for answers. What are what what has your have your interactions with the government been like? Have you been able to have conversations with Mr. Goodale, for example, Minister Garneau, or the prime minister about what you're hoping to see them do? Uh, we just talked to Mr. Gouda once, uh, you know, twice actually. One was a phone call and the other one was a, a virtual meeting for just few of us, uh, like the uh, representatives from the family members. Uh, if you ask me, I don't know what's going on, uh, because even now, Prime Minister today said that Iran is going to send the black boxes, but they say because of COVID-19, they can't. I think, you know, we know that COVID-19 has slowed everything down a little bit, but I think it can't be a permanent position. And uh, we, this excuse is no longer accepted, I think. So what is your, I guess, ask of, of the federal government? Is there anything in addition that they could be doing to try and ensure 
that this happens? I mean, I'm not privy to everything they're doing behind the scenes. I know that none of us are. But but what would your ask of the federal government be? You know, black boxes is just part of this story. Mm -hmm. We need to know who kept the sky open that night. We need to because we can't discount the possibility that this plane was shut down, shut down intentionally. No, nobody can say that. If it was a human error, Iran has to prove that. Iran has to say why they kept the sky open. I think for those answers, we need more pressure. I think if they're not cooperating, international court of justice can be a good option for us. And, and have you had any of those discussions or, or have you brought that up at all in the, in the two instances you spoke with Mr. Goodell, for example? Yes, every time, every time we are, you know, anything we are writing on social media, anything that we are demanding, we are demanding to take this case, open a criminal case in Canada and take, uh, you know, those uh, perpetrators to the International Court of Justice. After that, if you start a negotiation, it's all right. But when we are negotiating right now, I think it's not, Iran is not cooperating. They're hiding everything. They, they attacked a, a commercial airplane and after that they looted the, the crash site, they destroyed the crash site, they destroyed the evidences, they don't give the black boxes. How can we know that who ordered that attack to happen? I just have about 30 seconds left. You form this group now officially uh, to, to, to talk about this. What, what, what do you want Canadians to know about, about it tonight? Uh, you know, uh, 55 Canadian and 30 permanent residents died and it was an atrocity. And I think to seek justice, we have to stand together and we have to make Iran accountable for that. And that's a long way for us. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Hamed, no for being with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's Hamed Esmailion. Uh, he lost both his wife and daughter in Ukrainian Airlines Flight 752. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.